attacking everyone, almost as if it were alive. Luckily, there were only two of us, and both of us were nimble enough to dodge most of the strikes. There were a lot of Fatui, though, and they were being torn to shreds by the bolts of lightning. With that, all the Fatui soldiers were forced to retreat. It's all right. My wound aside, you look like you've seen something unpleasant. Just... Hey, didn't I tell you not to move? Just in case. Let's go to... Thank goodness she's fine. I understand my condition. Ugh. The wound is not fatal. I'll be all right. Ugh. The more you understand medicine, the worse of a patient you become. I know. They always think they can push through the pain. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, he sat down. Let me rest for a bit. <sighs> Sorry, traveler. Now you may start. Academia's God creation plan. How ridiculous. That sounds, uh, ambitious, I guess. Anyway, this is all way beyond me. As long as I can enjoy every day with a drink in my hand, tasty food in my stomach, and a good night's rest, that's enough. I'll only work when I have to. <laughs> I must be the least ambitious person who's ever set foot in Party's DI. Don't say that. I haven't even thanked you for your help back there. Don't mention it. Well, if nothing else, all this proves that the doctor really did have some urgent matter to attend to, and left Sumeru in a hurry. Hmm, maybe the Fatui want to cover up some secret of the Balladeer. Is that why they tried to seize Hapasia? You said the Balladeer claimed that Hapasia has seen his past. Have you noticed? The Balladeer is not happy with the doctor's actions. He thinks the doctor has no right to consider himself as his equal. So, if the doctor was to show up again, would the Balladeer zap him with lightning? Based on what the Traveler has said? I think he would. Having the doctor gone benefits him as well as us. In other words, we've successfully completed the stage of the plan. The doctor is out of the picture now. Yay! That's a big accomplishment! I'm also happy for you. Thank you for the help, Tainari. Make sure you rest up for now. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, that wraps things up for us here at Party's DI. Traveler, it's about time we rendezvous with the others at the Grand Bazaar. Let's continue to keep a low profile. You can head there once you're ready. Take it easy. If it isn't Nilu. Greetings, Mr. Jute. Do you still have any food that's ready to go? Of course I do. I've heard that Zubair Theater is hosting a celebration event, so I've reserved some food for you in advance. Although, it looks like you're gonna need two more portions. <laughs> ah, please allow me to introduce them. This is the Traveler, a very experienced adventurer. And this is Paimon, 
her super reliable guide and helper. No, 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 Paimon is... Uh, hold on. She got it completely right. Look, Traveler, she... <laughs> Don't underestimate Nilu. She always remembers every last little detail about everyone, even if it sounds completely trivial. She's also very brave. Just a little while ago, she saved my precious spices from the jaws of a Sumter Beast. Uh, don't think anything of it. I just help out when I can because everyone else takes such good care of me. Anyway, sorry to get off topic. We're in a bit of a hurry. Mr. Jute, did you say you didn't reserve enough food? <laughs> I was joking. Anyone who runs a business knows to keep some extra stock. After all, orders get changed all the time. Oh, that reminds me. It seems that these friends of yours aren't from here. Have they ever tried any delicious tachin? Ooh, what a fantastic idea! Mr. Jute, did you bake a batch recently? Tachin is a mixture of rice and meat that's baked into a cake-like shape. Mr. Jute adds special spices into his. Its aroma is just so wonderfully delicious. If you ever see kids crowding all around Mr. Jute's place, you know he's baking up a storm. <laughs> but is it really just for the kids? Don't you often follow them in, too? I... I just can't help myself. We're two peas in a pod! Who doesn't enjoy some good food? Wait here. I'll bring some over. Times I eat it, it's still so delicious. <laughs> I wouldn't have offered it as a treat if I wasn't confident in the taste. I baked a lot just now, and it's all packaged and ready for you to take back to the theater. You made so much. Is it really okay to take them all? It was nothing. Making one serving or 100 servings is all the same to me. If anything, I should be thanking you for helping me clear my inventory. Don't worry about it. What kind of person would I be if I made you pay for a treat? <laughs> Make sure you got everything. Feel free to come back anytime. Wait, I'm starting to understand how you got so many things. Y yeah, everyone has their own way. Nilu, good timing. I have the textiles you ordered. If you took any longer, the Sumter Beasts might have gobbled them up. <laughs> you and your jokes. Sumter Beasts won't eat those kinds of things, Mr. Offsheen. Jude said that some Sumter Beasts ate his spices. Were they yours? Oh, uh... <laughs> yeah, really sorry about that. Nilu, if it weren't for you, I would have lost half of my profits that month. Trying to pull anything out of a Sumter Beast's mouth is like playing a game of tug-of-war. So they really do eat anything, huh? Uh, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Come now. You know, Sumter Beasts sometimes eat not because they're hungry, but because they like gnawing on things. The textiles you ordered are highly durable and woven from the finest thread. So even if a Sumpter Beast got snacky, it'd still have to chomp on it for a full day. You've tested this before? But of course! How else could I be so trustworthy? Well, that one time was an accident. I wouldn't dare experiment with such a precious product. True, it does sound like some good fabric. Ho-ho! Have I piqued your interest? 
If you want to buy some, now's a good time. Buy two bolts and get 20% off. Ooh, that's a pretty good discount. What do you think, Traveler? No thanks, Mr. Offsheen. You can't use that kind of tactic on her. Look, you've already sucked her in. Uh, tactic? So you mean everything he just said to Paimon was a lie? Uh, I wouldn't go that far. It's just that Mr. Offsheen is really good at spinning stories. A word from him, and you'll find yourself buying things you don't actually need. Mr. Zubair gave me a huge lecture the last time I bought too many things. Come on, don't look at me like that. All she got was a talking to from Zubair while I was nearly fed head first to the Sumter Beasts. My philosophy is that stories give value to merchandise. That's why my business started with such a boom. Our Nilu here is an extraordinarily good listener. Back then, she believed anything I said. After a while, I began to feel guilty selling things to her because of how happy she looked. Though she enjoyed the stories, and I the Mora, I knew she didn't need to buy that much. Anyway, since then, I've come to realize two things. One, that stories should just be a means instead of an end. And two, that there's more to business than just selling goods. It's okay. We're all friends now. There's no need to dig up the past. Dare overstep your mortal authority?